Hi guys, welcome back to Behind the Beauty. I'm very excited to have our lovely guest from San Francisco today, Lisa Bensley. She's the store manager on Fillmore Street for Credo Beauty in San Francisco, as well as the specialist with Credo Beauty on how to swap out products for cleaner options. And you guys know, you follow me around, I have discovered Credo Beauty recently in LA and become obsessed with the store. So thank you so much, Lisa, for being on here today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. um, I mean, I, um, if my viewers or listeners are watching my YouTube channel, they know I recently discovered you guys. I'm obsessed because it's literally all of the clean products you hear about in one place. (laughs) That's what kind of brought me to Credo in the first place. I actually, I work there now, but I started as a shopper. Oh, wow. Really? So, um, yeah. So what is kind of your background before you started at Credo? Well, I was living in New York and I was working in the fashion industry, um, but I was blogging on the side, doing like a little beauty blogging and um, I'm actually a professional makeup artist. Oh, okay. So... It was kind of one of those things where, um, you know, if I wanted herbivore, I'd have to go to Urban Outfitters. If I wanted RMS, I would have to go to somewhere else. You know, not all these clean beauty items that I wanted and that I was personally trying to get into, I could find in one spot. And trying to navigate Manhattan and find all of these things, it can take you all day. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so that's really interesting. I love that you were a blogger too, or you had a blog because I think so many people don't know what goes into that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but it's a full time job. (laughs) Yeah. So when you were a makeup artist and you were looking for cleaner beauty products, was that something you're just interested in or was that like an active choice? Um, yeah, it was something I was just interested in. Um, I feel like there's, actually a surprising amount of misinformation out there Mm -hmm. um, because people were sending me stuff to use for my blog that I was, you know, thinking was natural or at least even a little clean. (laughs) And, um, you know, the more I started doing the research and the more I started, you know, personally wanting to use these products, I realized that, you know, it's not as clean. They they weren't as clean as they said they were. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Like how they can get away with so much of this, like just through what they claim or marketing. It's yeah, it's all marketing. And, you know, unfortunately there's no regulation. There's no, um, you know, government regulation. on it. There's only a few ingredients. Um, the FDA won't allow in beauty products here. Yeah. And, you know, in the UK, there's a lot more ingredients that they ban from beauty products. Yeah. Um, so what are some of the first things that you try to replace? Um, well, definitely parabens. Um, parabens and like known hormone disruptors. Those were the kind of the first things that, you know, when I started doing the research, I was like, you know, these, th- these are things that can mess with your estrogen levels. If you're a guy, they can mess with your testosterone levels. And I was just like, okay, let's just Let's start with the parabens, get those out of everything, and kind of go from there. Okay. And I, um, I just even learned about the hormone disruptors because I was doing my research on physical and chemical SPF because for so long I mm-hmm. thought all chemical SPFs were bad, but they're, but I liked some of them. And I didn't, reala- right. yeah, I didn't realize that some of it wasn't as bad as everyone makes it seem it is. It's just, right. it's, I think, two that was very heavily used in our sunscreens that cause estrogen disruption or something like that. Um, yeah, the, the oxybenzone and the avobenzone. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, I'm not sure if I'm saying I'm exactly right, but better than um, what I would have said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are those are definitely two to avoid. Um, you know, they were actually pretty easy for me to avoid because they make my skin like violently react. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, so sunscreen um, actually was one of the first things I switched. Okay, um, and so it's best to switch to. Um, a, what they call a physical blocker, yeah. which would be um, like a zinc oxide or a titanium dioxide, yeah. and it just means that it just means that it sits on top of the skin and kind of physically blocks the sun, whereas the um, the avabenzone, the oxybenzone, those kind of chemical products, they 
actually kind of absorb the UV rays and then bounce them back. Yeah, which is so in a weird, weird. way. You're <laughs> you're still kind of absorbing UV UV rays. Um, so yes, better to wear sunscreen than not wear sunscreen at all. But uh, just a physical blocker is just so much better for you. That those sun's rays are never getting in. Mm-hmm. They just um, kind of bounce back from the top of your skin. Yeah, I wear a physical SPF on my face, but then like on my lips, I've only ever worn chemical because I every time I try a physical one, I don't really like it. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. I mean, I figured it's better than nothing. <laughs> it, it is. Yeah, <laughs> it certainly is. You're like cringing. Um, you're like put on the physical on your lips too. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, because you're swallowing it. Yeah. Um, um, I didn't so, think about uh, that. If I could give you a personal recommendation, I really like Kula has these really cute, um, uh, little tinted lip glosses kind of, if you will. And they remind me of the fresh ones, you know, fresh uh-huh. the sugar rose. The, they remind me exactly of that. And they have, um, SPF in them. SPF okay. 30 actually. Oh, that's a big, that's a huge SPF too for a lip product. They usually only yeah. do like 15 or 20. Yeah, and it's just, they're super easy, um, just like a nice sheer wash of color. Okay, I'll have to look into those. Um, I'm, okay, I love, I'm love. i just so excited that you're on here because <laughs> I, I personally have been trying to figure out, like, what do I need to get rid of first? What do I need to be more careful with? Um, especially in my line of work, I try so many things, um, and I kind of want to be just... I want people to know what can hurt you and what, you know, like what's more important in terms of we might not all be able to just be completely clean right away. Um, right. And, and honestly, when, when clients come into the store and they just want to do a complete overhaul, I'm, you know, I actually steer people clear of that and just say, let's take it like a few steps at a time. Um, you know, because just like mainstream beauty products, not everything is going to work for your skin. So yeah. if you just overhaul everything all at once, you're not going to know what you like and what you don't like. Yeah. So or possibly it's like, let's start to. small. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, so stay away from the parabens and then stay away from the hormone disruptors. So what are some of the things that you recommend to start with? Like, do you start with skincare? Should I start? Well, obviously you said sunblock because that's an easy one to kind of figure out. Sunblock's an easy one. Um, I actually love when people start with body. Um, so the founder of one of the brands we carry, Osmia, came in, mm-hmm. and she's she's a medical doctor and just, you know, super smart and such a wealth of information. And she was saying, if, if you're absorbing 60-plus percent of what you put on your skin, you know, most people want to start with skincare, but really think about it. 90% of your body surface area is the body from the neck down. Yeah. Um, so one of the easiest things that, that you can do is just switch your body wash or your body lotion or even switch to a body oil, Okay. which is what I started doing. Yeah, so I put a body oil on my skin when I'm in the shower, when it's still wet, uh-huh. and then I just, you know, kind of tap dry and I'm off. I don't need to put on any extra moisturizer, and that's it. So with the body washes, because here's the other thing, it's like there's ones that claim they're cleaner and then there's ones that you're like, is this clean? Because there's all these ingredients in it that don't look like it should be in there. So what should I, right. lo- what should I look for in a body wash? Um, so in the, in the body wash, again, um, you know, look for, a, look for statements, paraben free, phthalate free, um, and phthalate is, it sounds weird, but it's actually spelled with a P in front. Yeah, I so can't say it every time I look at it. I'm like, <laughs> wait, what is I can't pronounce this. Those are good ones to avoid. Um, look for something that says FLS free. That's sodium lauryl sulfate. Mm-hmm. That one can be hard because the, um, because of the chemical, the, the names of stuff that you have to put on the back of the label. So sometimes you can find... Um, a cocoa sulfate, which is actually like a coconut derived. Okay. So that one could that one can be a little bit tricky, but if it says on the bottle SLS free, uh-huh. then that's good. Um, okay. What else? What else? You know, interestingly enough, um, there's not a lot of regulation on the bottles 
you can say that a product is natural if it only has 30% natural ingredients. What? Um, so you, you can say made from natural ingredients if it's only 30%. What you got to look for is 100% natural. Okay. And here's my other argument. If it says 100% natural, you're golden. Okay. And I don't know if I've even seen something that says 100% natural. That could be tough. <laughs> <laughs> it can be tough. Yeah. Um, so that's, well, that's something good to look for. And then, um, you know, a, a good brand to look for is Acure, um, A-C-U-R-E. Oh, yeah. Um, they're all over the place. We sell them at Credo. Um, they're at Target. Uh, they're at Whole Foods. They're really reasonably priced and their stuff is clean. Okay, that's good to know because that's the other question I get a lot. It's like switching out products for cleaner options are so expensive sometimes. It's really, well, that's another reason I recommend people take it one step at a time because it's really a journey. It's, you know, it's hard to switch over to a $100 face serum if you don't know if it works. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, well, first of all, I would recommend sampling. Smart which, sampling, which you guys is are really, go. you're very generous with at Credo. If you guys ever walk into the store, you guys do your best to sample anything and everything that you have samples of. Yeah, because we, I mean, we all get it. It's it's a journey. We, you know, everybody that works there is doing it with you. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. um, uh, I tried a ton, ton, ton of stuff before I found the items that I like. But then, you know. Interestingly enough, my routine is so pared down now that I've gone clean. I have three products that I use in the morning. What? That's it. Okay. Explain your morning routine for us. I use, um, most of the time, I don't even actually wash my face in the morning. I just splash water on it. I, I make sure to give it a really good cleanse at night. Mm -hmm. um, and then I put on a serum, a Marie Veronique CE Ferulic Serum. Um, it's just kind of our all-star anti-aging serum that we sell. Okay. Uh, then I use a marula oil, a couple drops of marula oil on my skin. Uh, that's my moisturizer. And then my SPF. What SPF are you currently using? Um, I'm not really loyal. Okay. <laughs> There's so many that I use, but um, at the moment I've been using Suntegrity, uh, this five-in-one tinted moisturizing sunscreen. Okay. It's a really, like, light sheer tint, and um, I use one pump on my skin and, and call it a day. Cool. Um, no, I my morning routine is so simple, too. I don't wash my face. I use the micellar water. Oh, yeah. I, I love a good micellar water. What Are there any clean options from Credo that I should check out? Uh, Patika has one that's actually really cool. Um, it's a micellar cleansing gel. Okay. So it's a little thicker than like a typical um, micellar water. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it works just the, exactly the same. You would put it, you know, on a cotton bud and um, just, you know, take all, the, take all the gunk off your face. And uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. And it's actually really concentrated because it's a gel. So you only need the tiniest little bit. Okay, cool. Um, I love that. So start with body, um, body washes, and you mentioned a cure. Is that how I say it? A cure or a cure? That's how I say it. Okay. <laughs> I never know how to say some of these words. Um, and then what would be like this, obviously, probably body lotion or body oil afterwards? Yeah. And, and again, you can, you know, a cure has you know, great $10 body lotions. And I think, you know, for a lot of people who are switching over to, if you already use a body lotion, you know, just stick with a body lotion. It's just a cleaner option. You don't have to necessarily switch to an oil. Mm -hmm. I just have been team oil for a really long time. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I like put oil in my hair, on my face, on my body. It just, um, it's so, it's so lovely. <laughs> like it just stays. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I know it, it's a little more expensive than a uh, typical body lotion, but it's because it's a really concentrated product, so you don't need as much. Yeah. Um, you know, oils are actually, if you're switching over to clean, oils are one of the cleanest, easiest things you can switch over to because you uh, reading the bottle is really easy. You look on the back, it's 100% marula oil or 100% <laughs> argan oil. It's like the easiest, um, you know, ingredient list to read. So yeah, <laughs> um, but it's it's super concentrated. It's the you know the most pure form of moisture you can get. It's not diluted down with water at all. 
Yeah. And that's what I wanted everyone to know too, is like, it might seem expensive, but honestly, my cleaner products last me a lot longer. Yeah. Cause they're super concentrated. There's, there's brands like Juice Beauty that they don't use any water in their products. Yeah. And then as soon as you take the water out, I mean, it's more cost effective, right? Because you're getting this like, super concentrated product, mm-hmm. but then you also don't have to add preservatives. And a lot of times when you start getting in trouble with the ingredients is preservatives. Yeah. But because it's, there's no water, so it's not going to get moldy. You know, it might over time, over like three years. But usually if the product goes rancid it's because of the water and um, then they have to start adding all these chemical preservatives so, you know, that your product will last on the shelf for three or four years. Yeah. Like, um, I just did an, a blog post about skincare expiration and makeup expiration, but yeah, water, um, air, like any time the product's exposed to air. So I think, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. cause juice beauty does a pretty good job with their packaging. Most of it is airtight. So, yeah. They have a lot of, um, their moisturizers are all airless pumps. Yeah. So yeah there, no, no air can get in there and kind of pollute your product. Yeah, and I think that's also important to keep in mind. Like, if there isn't any parabens in it and preservatives, then make sure you're looking for something that's also going to be airtight or and definitely don't stick your finger in those jars. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm always- yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, there are there are a lot of products too that are um, naturally antimicrobial, which is nice, like uh, coconut oil. Uh-huh. Um, so that helps that helps preserve the product. Um, vitamin E is something that's actually great for your skin and can help preserve products. Um, you know, a lot of these brands use, um, natural preservatives like radish root, Uh um, to, you know, to preserve their product instead of the old, the old nasty stuff. But, you know, and a lot of, um, products too, they come in, uh, they look like black bottles, but they're actually violet. Um, and that is to help, um, you know, pre- prevent UV rays from, from destroying your product as well. Oh, cool. Is that why, is that like a, for example, moon? Do they use yes. that? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Perfect example. Um, I love moon. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is so good. Yeah. They're, um, I think. Have you tried the, the cleanser, the Aqui? I haven't tried the cleanser, but the uh, body toning serum I'm like obsessed with. Nice, nice. And then also, I forget their, I don't know how to pronounce it, but their, like, their regular serum that acts as the moisturizer as well as the anti-aging kind of properties. I know they're, yeah, their stuff is so good. Yeah. I, I actually, I, I'm, like, nervous that I'm pronouncing it wrong, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's okay. Um, I think I'm always, like, pronouncing things wrong. And then, uh, of course, PR, like, emails me. I was like, oh, just so you know, this is how you pronounce it. <laughs> I'm like, great. I look like the idiot, like being like, oh, <laughs> so, um, you can get away with more on a blog, but on my YouTube channel, I'm just like messing things up left and right. <laughs> um, and for me, when I see something, even though if I know how to pronounce it, like if it's not spelled the way I think it should be, I, I get confused. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> no, me too. <laughs> Um, so we talked a little bit of like where to start with your body care, but okay. Everybody loves makeup. Even if they don't wear a lot of it, they love playing with makeup. What are some of the key pieces that you think are like the most harmful to us in our daily lives? Um, lipstick, lip products actually, uh, because you are literally swallowing them. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so especially, you know, you have your, like fabulous red lipstick on and then you go to eat lunch or, you know, um, drink a water or drink a smoothie or something. And then you're, you know, it's, it's going straight into your body. (laughs) So we're no longer talking like the 60% that they think you might absorb through your skin. We're talking about, you know, almost a hundred percent of the product you're actually ingesting. So, um, and I've always thought about that, which is why I don't really wear lip products, but I wear lip balm. (laughs) Um, so, and it really kind of scares me because all of these liquid lipsticks now, like they have to stay on almost like paint. So I'm like, what is in this that makes it stay? Right. Of course. I right. Say- when you actually are like using makeup remover to try and get it off, that's not coming off. Yeah. And here's the thing. They say it's obviously like safe to ingest, but really how safe is it if I ingest like a whole tube of it? <laughs> so, right. Um, right. Over, 
over, you know, I'm 37. So, you know, over, say, the past 20 years, all the lipstick and lip products that I've been ingesting. Yeah. Now, um, I when Bite Beauty came into Sephora, I was really excited because they claimed that they're food grade. So I don't know, like, are they really food grade? But I see that they're putting wax in it still. Well, you know, there's, um, there can be waxes that are naturally derived. Okay. So, um, say, say which brand it is one more time. Bite. Um, you know what? On the spectrum, they're, they're actually really good. Okay. I mean, yeah, they claim um, to be food grade. So I was like, okay, this is cool. And it's cute packaging, which is always a bonus. Yeah. Yeah. Actually on the spectrum of of all things they're actually not bad and then you can find some of their stuff that is um 98 to 100 percent natural okay now what are some what are some of your favorite lip products um okay so basically anything by Ilya, i love they kill it with the colors they feel like a traditional lipstick Mm -hmm. like you don't feel like uh, you know, you're not like, you don't feel like your lips are peeling off or the color is not staying. They feel like a traditional lipstick to me. Um, and the packaging is gorgeous. <laughs> gorgeous. Um, and just an FYI, Madame Mina is like the best color for so many people. Like, oh. it's, it's insane. So definitely check out that color if you haven't seen it yet. I don't think I've seen it. They They did send me some of the lip conditioners and I thought it was very unique. I didn't even know it was a clean brand until I looked into it. Um, oh, and um, did they send you the SPF ones? Because those some of them have SPF in them. No. Okay, I need to just go online and order some, or go back to Credo and buy it. <laughs> they had two colors, um, Bombora and Kokomo, um, that were their lip SPF, and then they just came out with two new colors for this summer. And so they have four tinted ones and one clear one that all have SPF in them. Okay, I might need to just get the clear one to put in my purse, too. Yeah, just to have. Yeah. Um, okay, so those are great lip products. And then um, any other? Um, we just uh, started with a new brand that is amazing, Kosas. Um, K-O-S-A-S. Oh, I just bought a lipstick from them. Oh, my God. They are incredible. They are, like, they are truly one of the longest wearing lip colors. And, and they're totally clean and the pigments are amazing it's just it, again it feels like a traditional mainstream lipstick you don't feel like you're compromising at all it's the same price as any other mainstream lipstick that you buy um you know mm-hmm. well you know department store price it's not drugstore price but you no, know but um and Costa, they're, exactly they're they're 24 to 26 dollars roughly and yeah, they last a long time. I've had my bottle of Madamina in my purse for I don't even know how long, and I use it literally every day. Um, okay, I need to pick up that shade from Ilya, and then the Kosas, mm-hmm. they smell like chocolate to me. Uh, they they do, right? <laughs> they do smell like something. I go I couldn't place it up until we have this conversation. <laughs> I was all like, mm, it smells good too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they like, they don't smell, you know, I think there's this misconception out there that everything natural or clean or however you want to say it is like hippy dippy and, you know, smells like patchouli, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, that's not the case. It's, um, you know, it, it can feel more luxury than that. Yeah. And nowadays I feel like people are really, because the consumer is getting smarter, I think brands, newer brands, these indie brands are really trying their best to not just make a good product, a clean product, but to make it fun to use. Right, exactly. The packaging is sexy. The product is sexy. You know, it's it feels like a department store experience, but it's clean. Yeah. Okay, so lipstick, definitely, if you're going to replace anything in your makeup, routine try replacing your everyday lipstick at least yeah I go with I go with lipstick first and then um you know the hard thing for me to switch over but one thing I think is really important to switch over also is mascara um Uh. or you know really any eye product because again you know your eye is an open surface um (laughs) you know what I mean and you're 
um, through your tear ducts and, and your not to sound gross, but this like mucus membrane that you have on your face, you're you're absorbing products. Yeah. I've been using the Well People mascara and I I'm surprised at how much I love it. It's it's an amazing mascara. It really gives good separation, a really black pigment. Mm-hmm. And you it can stays build it on. Up. You can build it up. You can take it off. Like it, it's it's so exactly. Good. Um, you can you can do a solid like three four coats and and you know with that brush it's one of those spiky plasticky brushes yeah still get that good separation yeah and that's what I was shocked about because it actually performs better than a lot of the plastic spiky brushes that you can find in mainstream makeup. Right. Um, I don't really like spiky brushes, which is why I was like, oh, great. But then I I bought it and I was like, this is really good. I really like it. <laughs> um, same. I, you know, I'm like, I don't want my little brush to look like a torture device. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, it gives, it just gives such great separation that I'm like, okay, I actually love this. Um, so I, can you recommend a good liquid eyeliner? Because the Wella one or the Well one always transfers on my lid I've tried setting it I've tried using a primer like it just will not work on me the well people one yeah um, oh shoot um so do you do it directly out of the tube or do you do it um, you like dip a brush in it and do it that way I've done both I started using a brush because that brush is a little chunky the one that comes in mm-hmm. the tube yeah I, I like to have a little more control I use a center brush to apply it mm-hmm so I just, it, um, and it's so weird hmm. because it will go on beautifully. I love the pigmentation. It's so black and like, it's just a beautiful liquid liner. And then I'll even set it with translucent powder and wait for it to dry or, you know, I've done everything and it won't necessarily wear off where I left it, but it transfers onto my crease. And I was just like, oh, Why? <laughs> Oh, that's so frustrating. I, you know, truthfully, that is the, that's the only like truly clean one that I know of. Um, okay. It was kind of a, you know, revolutionary formula. It's it, because it's new. It's like kind of one of those first to market, um, you know, clean liquid liners. Yeah, I know. I, you know, I wear liquid liner pretty much every day. So I still wear it because I'm like, you know what? I paid for this and it's not going to kill me. So I'll just wear it. And- <laughs> rub my eyelids every few hours, you know, like smudge it away. But, um, I just, you know, there are like certain things I'm just like, why does it have to have chemicals in it to work? I know the, uh, again, if your eyeliner can last for 24 hours, something weird is in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you are if at the end of the night, you are like <laughs> scrubbing your eyes to try and get it off then there's something weird in it that makes it last for that long. You know what I do like about like switching over to cleaner makeup for every day? It takes me less time to take everything off. Oh, totally. Uh, do you use an oil-based, like an oil-based cleanser? Yeah. Um, although currently I'm trying out the Osea cleansing milk. Oh, God, I love that brand. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's the first time I'm not using an oil as a first step. I'm using that instead. And... I was shocked at how easily everything comes off with it. Yeah, it's brilliant. And do you do it on a wet face or dry face? So see, the instruction says wet face and then, but Irene told me to do it dry face. So I kind of just like tap my hand in the water and then I pump it. And <laughs> use it on dry. I'm like, uh, I'll compromise. So... Well, there's no, there's no right or wrong way. That's the, that's the thing that's beautiful about it. But I, I like doing it on dry face and then, um, yeah, massaging it into my skin when it's dry. I like doing this not just with that cleanser, but with any like cleansing oil or cleansing milk. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll put it actually even like Tata's purifying cleanser. I wouldn't call that, I wouldn't call that a cleansing milk either, but I guess maybe it's a milk like consistency, but regardless, I put it on a dry face. And then I'll either, yeah, like dip my hands in some water and kind of lather it up mm-hmm. or I'll just use a hot towel, um, like a hot washcloth to take it off. Yeah, I use the hot washcloths a lot because I feel like that really gets everything off. Oh, totally. So, um, And it helps, it helps the, you know, it helps the other ingredients of the cleanser actually penetrate your skin. Oh, I never thought about it like that. Yeah, it opens up the pores. That's really cool. Um, so... 
we talked a little bit about like what to switch out, anything around the eyes and lips. And um, in terms of Credo, like if you wanted to go into Credo Beauty, you have locations in L.A., San Francisco. Do you have one in New York? We have two in New York, actually. We have one in Nolita, um, 9 Prince Street. Uh huh. And then we have one in Brooklyn in Williamsburg that just opened. Oh, wait. Ooh, nice. Um, <laughs> I have friends who live in Williamsburg, so I have to tell them. But, nice. Um, and then I just did a vlog and I was reading my comments and a lot of people were wishing that they could go to a credo, but they live a, outside of like a major metropolitan area. Is there a way for them to ask questions if they're shopping online? Yeah, actually, we have a live chat feature and um, the, the people who answer the live chat are actually like licensed estheticians and makeup artists. Okay. That's really cool. Cause I've noticed like Irene said she was a makeup artist and she'd been doing it for like 20 years. You say you were a makeup artist as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's really kind of cool that the people hired to work there typically know what they're talking about. Yeah. Everyone in all of our locations, um, is either an institution or a makeup artist or both. Okay. Um, and then I wanted to talk about some ingredients I had, I personally have questions about, and I mentioned a couple, a lot on my, um, throughout my content, but like mineral oils. Mm -hmm. How bad? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we avoid it. Um, uh, it's, it's a pretty bad one. Um, I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> well, okay. So um, I avoid you know, it. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Uh, okay. I avoid it. I don't like it because I, I read about it and I'm just like, okay, this isn't something that is doing anything good for me. So why not just take eliminate it as much as I can from my life? Um, and right. also I hear that it does build up over time in our system. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. That was just what someone had told me, um, a, a licensed esthetician, but I think that might well, be... I don't know. That can happen when you when you use ingredients that are not food grade, right? So, like, if you're using um, ingredients that are food grade on your skin, mm -hmm. uh, yes, your skin will absorb it, but your body knows how to digest food. Okay. Your body doesn't know how to digest um, mineral oil or uh, formaldehyde, which I know sounds really weird, but there's actually formaldehyde in beauty products. Yeah. Um your body doesn't know how to digest that. So that, so that is actually true. It can. Okay. So, cause I started to eliminate it probably a year ago from my, for my entire beauty routine. And I slowly, you know, now I'm just like, I won't touch the product if I know it's in there, but there's been times mm -hmm. when it's like hidden in there. And I was like, what? you know, after using half a bottle of something, <laughs> but so it's called mineral oil. It's called petrochemicals. Um, and then I think is, is paraffin also a divert, uh, a version of that? Yes. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Um, well, so for people who don't know why uh, mineral oil is like a bad one, it's kind of, um, you got to kind of think about it. Like it's petroleum. Yeah. Um, liquid petroleum. Um, so, you know, not sound crazy, but it's almost like uh, gasoline mm -hmm. in a way. Um, so, yeah, so look out for mineral oil, uh, paraffin. Um, it uh, might be under petrolatum or petroleum. Um, those are some good ones to look, some good words to look out for on the back of the oil okay. in the bottle. And then I always get these arguments that, well, it's triple filtered and it's safe. And I was like, well, just, <laughs> you know, like, what does that even mean? <laughs> I don't know. Right. Like, I'm like, okay, you can right. filter my gasoline three times. I'm not going to drink it. <laughs> right. Exactly. So that <laughs> that's kind of just like my argument. Cause I know like a lot of people don't want to get rid of their <laughs> petroleum products because to them it's, it's the only thing that they think has been saving their lips or their skin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I want to say that from my experience, it's not, it's not really, it's giving that false illusion. Exactly. It's just like, um, silicones in hair products. Yeah. Um, or you silicones in, in skincare products. It just, it gives you a fake 
softness, a fake silkiness. But, you know, most of the time if you're dealing with, um, you know, a mineral oil or petroleum or a silicone, is the active ingredients in the product that you're buying can't actually penetrate that layer, Mm -hmm. right? So if you have like a layer of silicone on your face and then you put, uh, you know, carrot seed oil, something good on top of it, it can't penetrate through that barrier and actually get into it. So it's almost like you're wasting those good active ingredients. Yeah. And um, it, it's not, it has no nutritional value for us. None. <laughs> so, so I'm like, I was like, it's not actually moisturizing or hydrating. It just, because right. um, there is literally no nutritional value. I do know that some people use it as like a carrier in their products or as right. like, you know, um, and I, this, the sugar, scrubs I use like some of them have a mineral oil in it but I figure I wash it off (laughs) so I was like oh it it comes off immediately uh I'm not using it to hydrate right but it's just here it's just funny like you said like what's the point of even putting it in there in the first place yeah I don't know it's a filler yeah I mean I just I don't like it and I try to avoid it as much as possible especially in my lotions and my body washes and my face stuff yeah, absolutely. I think that's, um, that's a big one to avoid. More than anything, I'm just like, you're just putting a filler in my product and you're kind of dumbing it down and I'm paying all this money for it. So, Yeah. Okay. So now my next one is because I'm on this like crusade of like not using talc that is loose. Mm-hmm. And what is your take on it? Because um, I just bought Kajal Weiss, her foundation, like the last ingredient is talc, but it's a cream. So I figured it's not that bad. Right. It's the, the, you know, usually the problem with talc is when it's, yeah, exactly in a powder and you're kind of breathing it in. Yeah. And I definitely, I'm always like, if it's a loose powder, like a translucent powder for your face to set makeup, it shouldn't have talc as the first ingredient. Right. Exactly. Because um, you know, the first ingredient in any beauty product is the most concentrated. Yeah. So that's why if talc is the first ingredient or if water is the first ingredient, you're, you know, you're paying for 80% of your formula to be that first ingredient. So, yeah, definitely, you know, if it's the last ingredient or if it's in, um, a, you know, a cream base, fine. But if it's the first ingredient in your powder product, you're just straight up breathing all of that in. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing. Like, I think people get this weird misconception because they're like, talc is safe. And I'm like, no, it's not. People are literally like complaining about ovarian cancer because of using right. baby powder in their underwear. <laughs> so right. I'm like, no. Um, what are some good replacements for mineral oils and for talc, though, like that you've noticed in the cleaner beauty world? Well, um, you know, so let's start with the mineral oil, especially because you said in lip products, um, you know, uh, shea butter, honey, if you're not vegan, honey, um, argan oil in lip products. Those are all just really like delicious moisturizing ingredients. They're safe to ingest and um, they're going to give you more moisture Mm -hmm. than a mineral oil would. Real moisture, not fake moisture. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, um, those would be some good ones for to replace mineral oil. Cool. And then talc. Mm. Um. Well, that's a that's a hard one. Um. So I guess we, you know, talking about loose powder, really, uh, you just avoid that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's um. You know, most of the so if you go into a credo say and you're looking at a a, a loose powder, um product like a juice beauty or um antonym Mm -hmm. uh well people they all have kind of loose powders it's just um it's all pigment yeah Uh, if you look on the back of the ingredients it's straight up all pigment which it's um gonna last you a lot longer and um it's you can build up a nice like a better coverage um but then there's just you know there's nothing bad in it I really if like that makes sense. No, I told yeah. I love the Ilia soft focus powder as a good like translucent setting powder. Oh gosh, I love that stuff. Have you tried the um 
They have the moon dance one that's got the SPF in it. No, I need that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good. To, it's just like a like a throw in your bag type of powder. Like the the setting powder is obviously better for setting your makeup, but that one it's just um, it already comes in the little brush. Uh huh. Um, so you just like throw it in your makeup bag. It's bigger than a lipstick, but not you know it's not like a giant tube. And yeah, you just brush it on if you're out and about and you need some extra SPF. And it's um, zinc oxide. Oh, wait. That's perfect because um, I always carry some sort of mineral SPF on me for touch-ups. Not for my face, right. but for protection. So that's really good to know that right. Ilya has one. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm totally going backwards. But for Credo Beauty, in case people don't know, it's a clean beauty store, essentially. Right? Am I saying that? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And what um, is um, everything you guys carry? You guys rigorously like go through the ingredients to make sure they're as clean as possible before you put it on the shelves. Correct? Exactly. Okay. Um, we kind of we've. If you're not savvy about reading your your labels, it's you know it's a good place to go because we've we've kind of done the work for you. And you know, like we were saying before, everybody who works there is an esthetician or a makeup artist or both, and. Um, are really knowledgeable about all the brands there. So, um, and it's not pretentious. Like you can, you know, go in and bring a bottle of something in that you have a question of, and say, like, I'm kind of worried about this ingredient, and you know, we'll 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 let you know if we, you know, on the scale of things, if we think it's good or bad. Yeah, that's what I love is you guys are so open to talk about it, and you really sit down and like answer my questions. Um, and you guys don't even care that I'm like in there filming. <laughs> I'm like, Hey guys, <laughs> cause I'll, I, I was vlogging and I was like, Hey Irene, can I like film? And she's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, I just bought this. This was really cool. I'm coming back for this one. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, we really want it to be like an, you know, an unpretentious environment where people can, can come and actually get their questions answered because, you know, we really think that this is the future you know um the more places like us pop up and the more people are getting savvy about their ingredients you know the more demand there will be for clean products and it's going to hold people who aren't using clean ingredients accountable yeah and I think it's slowly happening I'm seeing it more in mainstream like how they're trying to say oh we remove the silicones we remove the fragrance you know it's baby steps for them but I think the more demand and the more we educate ourselves, because if we demand it, they have to do it at some point. Exactly. Exactly. Um, um, random side note, you just said fragrance. Uh-huh. Um, fragrance is also something to look for in a beauty product. Um, artificial fragrance. If you find a beauty product that says no artificial fragrances, that is awesome. Because... Um, Fragrance is a real culprit. There's no regulation on it whatsoever. It's kind of um, Indy Lee, one of our um, brand founders, uh-huh. she actually calls it secret sauce because there's no regulation on it in it. So you can put so much bad stuff in it and it's all you have to do is list fragrance. <gasps> yeah, so, so fragrance, artificial fragrances are actually something that would be a really good thing to replace. In, um, in your beauty products, in your life. <laughs> okay, so that I know that fragrance in skincare, like on my face, irritates me, so I don't use anything that has fragrance added. Like if it's a fragrance, oh, it's all... Yeah, it's all natural. It's just the way it smells. Like, yeah. By the way, Indy Lee's grapefruit cleanser, amazing. Mm. <laughs> oh, it just, so good. And it smells amazing. So my question is, the fragrance industry is huge, like every Mother's Day, every birthday, like Valentine's Day. Now, how do I know if those fragrances are going to kill me? <laughs> like, um, it's, uh, it's tough um, because, yeah, you know, because there's, there's not a regulation on it. So they don't have to disclose anything to you. They can just say, you know, notes of amber and um, iris accord and then you know you're swept away with how beautiful it smells and um but they don't actually have to tell you what's in it so um some cool brands to look out for uh lake and sky okay um ellis brooklyn 
Um, those are some uh, M I M C M C. Um, those are some really cool brands to look out for. You know, the fragrances are made with essential oils um, rather than I don't know whatever secret sauce is in <laughs> in a lot of the other fragrances. That's what's so hard too, because you know we just I I love fragrances, but I just don't know where to buy fragrance because. I, I obviously know like you charging me $65 for that 1.7 ounce bottle is not pure <laughs> essential oils. Like those are not rose right. petals in there. So, cause yeah. I, I think we have to be aware too, like really concentrated essential oils or the actual like rose oil for a rose fragrance is really expensive. Oh, and some roses, like the Damascus Rose in particular, they're so, so expensive. So, you know, you know, when you're going into a place like Credo or, you know, any clean beauty store and you're buying a fragrance from them, it's usually uh, the person who made it, it's small batch. It costs them a lot of money to make it. And, you know, there's a reason for that price tag. Yeah. But at least you know it's 100% essential oils. At least you know the price tag is because they're not just putting fillers or weird stuff in there. At least you know you're getting a pure, concentrated, like totally clean product. Yeah, and um, I, because I recently, and it honestly, it's not even that expensive compared to like what mass marketing is doing with fragrances because I bought one from the organic pharmacy, this Tubler Rose, and I got a huge bottle. It was $200, but... I mean, I don't remember the last time I went through a fragrance bottle. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, um, and I know that. You know what? I'm actually, I'm actually going through um, really quickly. Is uh, so next time you're at the store, check out Eleven Eleven oh, by okay. Lake and Sky. It's <laughs> it's so good. Um, it's unisex, men or women can wear it. It smells so dang good. It's in like a little roller ball. You just pop it in your purse. Okay. Um, I've been wearing it every single day. Okay. I, that's the thing. It's like, I don't need a ton of fragrances. I have too much fragrances, but I am trying to like clean that area of my life a little bit better. Right. Um, but, but really, yeah. When you mentioned fragrances, if you guys have like skin irritation or acne or sensitive skin, that's like something you really should be aware of. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, maybe you don't switch your perfume out right away. Maybe that's the last thing you switch over. But but just try to avoid artificial fragrance in your skincare. Because, yeah, to your point, it's going to do nothing but irritate your skin usually anyways. It's just, it's just to make the product smell good. I don't think it really has much of a purpose. Yeah, which is unfortunate that they do that. I don't know why they do that, actually. <laughs> but Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you so much for being on today like this was amazing and I just I could talk to you like forever because <laughs> I know I, I'm like is this my dream job I'm just talking about beauty products all day <laughs> it's kind of my job so <laughs> but I was like I am so excited this is one of the most exciting interviews just because I have so many questions myself um so I do think if anybody has any questions like do the online chat at Credo Beauty or go into a store if you're lucky enough to be in an area. And um, For sure. Yeah. Do you have like an Instagram or do you want me to list the Credo Beauty Instagram? Like what What do you... Yeah. Um, you know what? Um, Credo Beauty and then mine is uh, Beauty by Ben, uh, B-E-N-Z. Okay. So we'll have... Um, that's my personal... Okay, well, we'll have it in the show notes and the YouTube video of this Insta. Uh, this isn't Instagram of this podcast episode. <laughs> okay, awesome. Cool. Thank you um, so much for being a guest. Yeah, yeah, of course. And yeah, let um, you know, let us know if you need anything. And I, I love Irene. I'm so glad you're working with her. She's the sweetest. Yeah, I mean, I just walk in there. I'm like, hey, <laughs> remember me? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I so. Thank you guys so much for listening and we will see you next week for a new episode of Behind the Beauty. Bye. Um, okay, so you don't have to hang up.